Right, welcome back then. We've just got the chicken tikka masala cooked. That is in the oven, just keeping nice and warm. Gonna run you through the three side dishes that I told you I like to have with mine, because if you're gonna have a curry, if you go out for a curry, you always end up with at least two or three side dishes. Everybody shares it. So my three are gonna be lentil dal, garlic mushrooms, and sagaloo. But we, for video purposes, we're gonna run you through these separately. So let's start first with the lentil dal. Lentil dals, we're starting off with obviously main ingredients. We're using red lentils. Weight-wise, so you know, we're using 200 grams. And with water ratio, so you get the balance of the liquid right as well, I tend to use a four to one. So where we've got 200 grams of lentils, are we putting 800 grams of water? To do the masala sauce, we're using a large white onion, all chopped up. I like to use fresh vine tomatoes. You can see the vine tomatoes here. I've got three of those all chopped up. Also, I'll be using the bullet chilies, this one. I've taken the seeds out, like I've said before, I don't like things too hot. I've got one of those stripped back, all the seeds are out, and basically I've minced it as fine as I can, because what you don't want to do in lentil dal is end up with great big chunks of chili, because it's not very nice. Spices that you would, you would be putting in, we always start off with the cumin seeds. There's one teaspoonful of cumin seeds. We will be putting in some uh, fenugreek leaves as well, almost to the end, that'll be one teaspoonful again. A little bit of turmeric, I find even with lentils, I like to color it slightly, but I don't use a lot of turmeric. Can be a bit bitter on the tongue sometimes if you overdo it. So around about a quarter to a half a teaspoonful of turmeric. It's got those lovely antibodies in there as well. Towards the end, we'll be adding a good heap teaspoonful of garam masala and obviously salt to taste, and it also helps this to get reduced down with the onion and the cooking of the masala sauce. So let's get back onto the stove, get this lot going, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so now we're on the stove, we've got the lentils, I've just put the gas on. I'm gonna turn this up now so we can get a nice good flame to start the lentils cooking. Into the lentils, all I'm gonna add very quickly is just about half a teaspoonful of salt just to get that little bit of flavor, not quite half a teaspoon into the lentils, just to add that bit of flavor. And the oil in the pan, all I've put so far is 20 grams of oil. So if you're with Weight Watchers and you're doing this as a point counting, two points worth of oil is all we're using in the lentil dal. While the oil is cooking up, let's get the heat up on this one. And then what we're gonna do is start off with our first flavor, which is the cumin seeds. We put those in, give those a wiggle around. And as you can hear, it's starting to sizzle nicely already. You only really cook these long enough until you can get the flavor of the cumin seed. Once you smell it and you get that lovely aromatic cumin flavor coming out, then you know you can start adding in your other ingredients. So give it a stir, and the smell of that, as you can see, it's looking really nice already. The flavor is just starting to hit the air now. So it takes usually about 30 to 45 seconds for the cumin. Again, flame-wise, I've got mine on a sort of three-quarter flame height, not too high, just to get the flavors to actually start coming out of the seed. Once that's happened, then you can get into your onions and start putting the other ingredients into the pan. So let's dip in the onions. And we're just gonna fry these down. We don't want to get them burnt or caramelized in any way. We just want to get these reduced down so that they go a nice translucent color. So we stay on the pot with this for a while. Check the lentils and give that a stir so it doesn't catch the bottom of the pan whilst we're waiting. Give that a good stir. And then we can come straight back to the onions. At this point, I can have the heat up a little bit more just to help that go down. And again, because we've put salt already into the lentils, we don't want to add too much salt, but if you add a little bit of salt into the onions at this point, and again, just a splash, about less than half a teaspoonful, what that will do in turn is help to reduce the onions down even quicker. I normally put these on for two to three minutes, and then as soon as I can see they're starting to shrink down, this is now where I'll add 
some garlic and ginger paste. Now remember me saying before about you can use the cubed ones. All I've done is taken a cube of the garlic and ginger paste from the freezer and then I've taken it out, put it in the microwave for about 10 seconds just to thaw it. You can see as soon as you put that in the pan, almost soft enough to start cooking. So that's basically one teaspoonful of garlic and ginger paste. And the smell of this as it's coming together is absolutely lovely. And all we're doing at this point is making a masala sauce. You can see the lentils are now cooking up nice. I'm gonna turn those down to simmer for a while whilst we're just frying off the onion. And all we're doing is reducing this down as much as we possibly can, just to make our masala sauce. Lentils are simmering down. And the other thing you'll you look at as well, when you look at the lentils, if you don't want this skin over the top, you can actually take that away. You don't need to have this scum on the top of your lentils. So I always give mine a little wipe, take it away, to get rid of the scum and then just leave the lentils to simmer slowly on the side once they come up to a good boil. And you can always test the lentils as they're cooking through. Once you put them between your fingers and you can sort of, I'd say once they go pasty between your fingers, then you know that they're cooked and you can turn them off. So it does come together quite quick, this dish. You can see the onions are reducing down already. Usually takes three to five minutes to get the onions to reduce down and heat wise again, you can see I'm on a sort of three quarter heat, not quite up full, just to get this to come down quicker. So let's leave those there for a couple more minutes and we'll come back to that. Now that the onions have been reduced down slightly, didn't really want to caramelize them like this, but it doesn't matter because it does, doesn't really detract from the taste. We're just gonna add in the tomatoes now three of those lovely on the vine tomatoes. We'll put those in. This is the, the base of our masala sauce at this point. And all we wanna do is just keep cooking this down until the tomatoes have seriously reduced down. So flame back up again to help this speed up. And we can at this point as well, now the masala sauce is coming together, that little bit of chili that we had. You can put it in with the onions, some people do. I always put mine in when I'm starting the masala sauce so I don't burn it too much. I like to have mine as a, a liquid flavored chili flavor rather than the burnt chili flavor. Everyone's got their own preference, but all we're doing with this is just reducing this down until the tomatoes turn into a nice paste. So let's keep this on the stove have a double check on the lentils and see what's going on with them. I think they're almost there. Because lentils, they don't take long. They usually take about 10 minutes. Let's give this a little test. See what the lentils feel like. Slight bit longer. They're almost there. Probably about another four or five minutes and the lentils will be ready. So let's continue reducing this down and we'll come back again in a minute. Now, as you can see, the tomato and onion is all reduced right down. This is turning into a nice masala paste. The tomato is breaking up quite nice. It's taking approximately four to five minutes. We'll start adding in some other ingredients now. This is where we'll add in that little bit of turmeric and we will also add in the fenugreek leaves as well. Just while this is frying off. And this doesn't take that long. I always put these in while it's getting nice and pasty, you can see it's chasing itself around the pan. This is where you know you've got this almost right. Just keep chasing it around. You can see it's sort of playing chasing the pan here, like round and round and round. This masala sauce smells absolutely divine at this point. This is where you think this is gonna be a really nice side dish. And this is what I love about lentil dal on the side. It is such a tasty dish, very wholesome, very nutritious. You can see the lentils have reduced right down as well. Go over to those, they're just about ready. They, they're off of the stove. I've turned the heat off of those during the pausing period because they're just about ready. What we don't want to do is ruin the lentils too much. And this masala sauce is just about ready to be put into the lentils at this point now. So we can turn the heat right down transfer the pans over and all I'm going to do is transfer all of this masala sauce 
into the pot of lentils. Put the pan to one side and just incorporate all of this together and give it a good stir. All of these flavors are coming together nicely. We have one ingredient left, but I like to give this a bit of a mix first, get it to all blend up nicely. I'm turning the flame up just a little piece as well, just while I'm incorporating this, because I want this to come back to a bubbling sensation before I add in the garam masala. Almost coming up to heat, but you can see that is absolutely delicious. And now it's coming up to the heat. All we're gonna add in is the garam masala. Again, it's one good heap teaspoonful. This will cook itself through. Turn the heat back down again. And at this point, if you want to, you can add some coriander if you've got fresh coriander leaves. For, for me on the lentil dal, I don't mind it in tikka masala dinners. I don't mind it in some of the other side dishes as well. But for this one, in my lentil dal, I prefer not to have fresh coriander. It's just a personal preference. That is just about there. The smell of this is absolutely delicious. So there's the lentil dal, all nicely stirred together. That is getting ready to serve. We're gonna put that to one side now, keep that in the oven while we work our way onto the next side dish. So there is your lentil dal dish.